Hello everyone, today I'll show you how I drew this tiny tiger on an ACEO format, which is uh, about two and a half by three and a half inches. So I transferred my image uh, with uh, tracing paper and a white pencil, uh, because if I sketch on the uh, straight on the black paper, if I do erase, it's going to uh, show on the paper and it's not going to look good at the end. So I always transfer my uh, drawings, my line drawings onto the black paper whenever I use black paper. Then I took a white pencil, which I sharpened to a very fine point, and I started working on the underpainting. Um, I used only lines um, going in, in the direction of the first, so I really looked carefully at the uh, reference picture I was using. For this drawing, pretty much every stroke I made was um, a hair, basically, it's just drawing the fur. Oh, just little lines in um, the direction, always going in the direction of the hair. So when I was uh, pretty much done with my white underpainting, um, I went over the lighter areas, like the fur around the eyes, and made it a little bit wider. Then I used my um, second lightest pencil, which was sand, and I started adding colors to the fur. Um, again, just lines to show the fur. And um, you might have noticed that my pencil kind of looks strange. Well, it's just my homemade pencil extender. I'll have to make a little video for this, a quick little video. Um, I have two ways to extend my pencils, and you see some on the table next to me. Um, I will uh, use my little stubs and um, glue them onto regular, uh, very cheap graphite pencils. Uh, I'll link a video on how to do this. Um, but another quick way, a quick fix, is I save um, straws. And some pencils, like the Prismacolor pencils, for instance, they do fit in straws. And all I have to do is just like slip into a straw and it just extends my pencil. It fits just nice and, and snugly and it's perfect. So if you've seen this video, funny looking pencils, they're actually little stubs stuck in uh, inside uh, straws. My layer of uh, sand is kind of my mid-tone color. So once I've applied um, that color pretty much all over the, uh, the drawing, I used my dark, I'm not gonna say my darkest because I still, I also look, uh, use black, but I used the second darkest color, which uh, is uh, dark brown. And I established uh, the darker tones of the, uh, the fur. And, and then I took my white again and uh, I pushed a little harder on it this time uh, to establish my, um, my lighter. Actually, those are actually white areas on the fur. So basically the whole process is just adding layers upon layers of uh, pencils with a very light hand. Um, and it just builds up to a nice texture and a more realistic look. If I start with a heavy hand right away, I won't be able to add very many layers. And so I won't be able to add details to my drawing. Another very important tip is to always keep your pencils very sharp. You'll see on my table next to me, I always have a, sh a sharpener and I'm always picking it up, always sharpening my pencils. If you don't, then your tips will become dull and you won't be able to add fine details. Although using dull tips can yield to very nice results and um, nice textures on your drawing, um, if you want your colors to be saturated and the colors to really go inside the little holes of the paper, then uh, without actually squishing the, the tooth of the paper, then um, the fine point is what you need. So the next color I use is yellow ochre. And then on top of that, I use goldenrod in the darker areas. Those two are pretty much the darker midtones if you want. Then I worked on the highlights again with the white pencil, um, adding more white to the um, white fur and also to the lighter 
uh, orange parts of the fur. I used some cool gray pencils also, and I can't remember the percent, probably a, a 50 and a 20 percent, something like that. Maybe um, a 70 percent uh, where, it, where it's darker. I used those um, inside the ears for the shadows and uh, in the neck area. Once the fur is pretty much established, um, I always use a black pencil to um, color in inside the black spots, even though uh, you could just leave it alone with the, um, the black paper. I like to uh, make it more uniform by um, adding black, black pencil. Also, uh, keeping it very sharp, I kind of go into the colors just to refine the texture of the fur. And because I push uh, quite hard on, on the, the pencil this time, um, then this particular area, the black spots, they often end up being pretty shiny, which I don't like necessarily. So I have a little trick to make the um, surface more uniform looking uh, and not have, have um, shiny spots. Uh, on the right side uh, on my, of my desk, you see a tiny stub and it's a Darwent drawing pencil and it's a black one. And this is a very creamy uh, pencil. And so when I use it on the paper, it just um, adds a layer, a matte layer of black. So once I'm done using the black Prismacolor pencil, if there are larger areas that are shiny, then I will cover them all with the black uh, Darwin drawing pencil. If you've pushed too hard on your pencils too early and you end up not having enough grip for more layers, you can always use a fixative to add a little bit more texture to your paper and you'll be able to add another layer or two before you call it quits. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned a thing or two and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.